everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be going over a few new pieces that I picked up from Chanel. One of them is a piece from the Chanel LeBlanc 2022 Summer Collection. This is the Imaginaire Quad. This is the Summer Quad and this retails for $62. They did launch quite a few things in the LeBlanc Collection for the summer but I ended up only picking up the quad because that was the thing that I was most interested in. They launched several new lip items. They launched some nail polishes. They also launched a multi-use highlighting top coat stick. I didn't pick those up either. I was just mostly interested in this quad. I love a peachy quad. I love peach tones. I have a medium to tan complexion and there's something about the color peach. I just love it against my complexion. You know how it is. When you find your favorite color and you just know it's gonna be always a dependable color to wear, whether it's a peachy lippy, a peachy blush, a peachy eyeshadow, a peachy shirt, whatever it is, it's one of those colors that I can always depend on. So I am kind of obsessed with peach. So when I saw this quad, I had to grab it because I love peach. Of course, I'm gonna share my thoughts with you guys on this new quad. I'm gonna be trying it on, you know, playing around with it. And then I will definitely do some swatches of the quad and also share comparisons of those swatches next to other products that I find that might be similar in color story and stuff. So you guys can kind of decide if it's something that you need in your collection. And the other piece that I picked up was this. This highlighter has been out for a while, but we just got it in the United States. And I could not wait to get my hands on this. I just think the embossing is absolutely beautiful. Yes, it's an $80 highlighter. You heard me right. This highlighter is $80, but it's so beautiful. And the embossing with that camellia flower is just so gorgeous. I had to grab it, you guys. I did. I think this is called the Rev Day Camellia Highlighter. This is like their illuminating powder. I like their illuminating powders. I'm not a super fan of their glow sticks, so I've bought those before and they never work for me, so I am never getting suckered into those again, but I do like their illuminating powders, so I did pick this up. I will try this out on camera, share my thoughts with you guys, and then of course I will share swatches of it so you guys can see it swatched and how it compares to other highlighters in my collection so you guys can get an idea and also decide if it's something that you need in your collection. That's what we're doing today. It's all about Chanel. Let's go ahead and dive into the try on portion of the video. I'm going to try on both of the products. I do have some pretty important thoughts about this quad. I feel like this is not going to work for everyone. I feel like this is going to fit a specific need from that specific customer. So I will definitely get into that in my final thoughts. So hang tight for that. For now, we're going to dive into the actual application of both of these products, kind of sharing my experience as I go. Then we will get into the swatches and also the comparisons of these products next to other products in my collection. Then I will get into all of that in my final thoughts. So I will see you guys then. All right, let's go ahead and jump into the palette first. So this is what it looks like. And then these are the shades in the inside of it. Let's do kind of a close up. That's what the palette looks like. Now the camera is kind of washing out the colors. There we go. That's more of the tone of the palette right there. Now, before I dive into it, what I already see about this palette that I'm not like super excited about, looking down at the palette, these two shades are very similar. I would say, one is just a tad bit darker than the other. So I don't really understand, you know, why they needed both of the, those shades in this palette. Uh, they could have kept this peachy shade and then did something different here. So I'm not feeling that part about it. And I've said it before and I'm gonna say it again. I don't like it when a, when a quad that is very expensive, Tom Ford does this all the time, but putting a light bone shade like this in a quad is kind of a waste of shade. And in this particular situation, they're too close. They just, you just do not need those two shades together. They, you, it, they're, too, they're too close for a four pan quad. They just are, that's just my opinion, but we're gonna dive into it. So I'm gonna go straight into this darker peach color and I'm gonna put that all over the lid. Let's just see what kind of pigment we get from it. I gotta build this up for a minute. So I'm actually gonna use the felt tip applicator that came in the palette. 
Yeah, the felt tip applicator is applying this much better than the brush was. I've had to go into this palette way too many times to build up that peachy shade. Way too many times, y'all, way too many times. So now I'm gonna go in with the brush and I'm just gonna kind of sweep that into the crease and kind of blend it out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the felt tip applicator and I'm gonna go into this shade because I wanna show you guys the difference um, of the two shades on the lid. Even though I'm not gonna be do doing two different looks, I'll try to make them work. But I want you guys to be able to see the difference. So that's the difference between the two shades on my complexion. Now, being that I'm a medium to tan skin, this is definitely more of a bone shade. It doesn't really have any color to it per se. I think if you have a lighter complexion, that shade might show up on you. But in my opinion, it's a complete waste of shade. And you only get 2.8 grams worth of product in these quads, so they are very pricey for how much you get. So I kind of, wish that that was a different shade, but it is what it is, right? Now I'm gonna take that same felt tip applicator and I'm gonna go into this sparkly shade on the top and I'm gonna place that on top of this peachy shade. So it doesn't have much shimmer. It's a very, very light kind of wash of glitter. It's, um. It's got tiny, 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 finely milled little glitter particles in it. Not my favorite, to be honest with you. It's just not that flattering. Like, that's the shade of it, and this is what it looks like swatched. Like, there's hardly anything there. That's the shade swatched twice. And now, don't get me wrong, it looks pretty there, but there's, like, nothing to it, right? Let's dampen the applicator. Let's see if that helps. I'm going to spray it with some MAC Fix Plus just a tiny bit, just to see if I can get a little bit more of a sparkle. I mean, I'm not, I don't really care if it's a, you know, cause this shade I can tell is not supposed to be a super shimmer shadow, right? It's not meant to be super shimmery, right? So I understand it, but there, it's giving nothing, like hardly anything to be completely honest with you. So I think that's where I'm frustrated because I'm like, what is it? Okay, let's go into the purple shade and see what the purple shade has to offer. So I'm gonna grab it. So I'm just gonna focus this like right here on this outer corner. Now this isn't really offering a lot of pigment either. It's given me something, but this is definitely a very light wash. So I'm gonna use a different brush and pick it up. And I'm just gonna kinda drag it or out. I'm just gonna kind of drag it down. Okay, so I went ahead and threw on some concealer. I'm gonna go ahead and go straight into this dark purple and I'm gonna put that on the lower lash line. This purple kind of reminds me of a shade that I have from Surat. It has that similar kind of silky texture. I love the Beyond Beige palette. It's one of my favorites from Surat. This shadow has that silky texture. I feel like I get a little bit more pigment from the Surat. I don't feel like that's a shade in particular that you'd have to worry about harsh lines, which is the reason why I like the Beyond Beige palette so much because the silky texture, the way that the brush kind of blends out the pigment, it does have that silkiness to it. And so it spreads so evenly. And then if you go over top of any line with a brush, it just, it kind of just blends it and like disappears because it does have that really finely milled silky texture. I do feel like I get more pigment from the Surat. I feel like with this one, I just have to keep adding and adding and putting on more and 
you know, it's just, it's, it's just not very pigmented at the end of the day. Uh, I'm going to take a flat brush and I'm going to go into that dark purple, tap that into this outer corner just to give a little bit of darkness right here at the base. And I might do that here on the lower lash line as well. I think for the eyeliner, I'm just going to use a gray color. This is from Victoria Beckham Beauty. It is in the shade Ash. And I'm going to create a tiny bit of depth here on this outer corner and kind of blend it out. And I'm going to use that purple shade to go right over top of it. Okay, so I kind of regretted using that ash because I felt like that ash was just a little bit too harsh for this look. So I went into my collection and I found this from Nabla. This is called the Cupid's Arrow. This is a full color stylo. This is in the shade uh, number seven arrow, but obviously, you know, you could use this as actual pigment to put on and then blend out. But this color actually goes quite well with the purple that's in the Chanel palette. So putting those two together, I know that's the swatch from the purple, y'all. That is the swatch from the purple. If I use this palette again, this might be something that I could put on first, kind of put it on the outer corner, kind of get some color going, and then maybe go over top of it with this, because these two colors actually do work really well together. Uh, but right now, it's got a nice little pencil on it, you can see. So right now, I'm just basically using it as an outer corner kind of, you know, building up some depth out there. But I'll be honest with you guys, I don't know how impressed I am with this. Like, ay -ay -ay. I was just expecting it to have a little more something to it. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of finesse this and finish it up, do the other eye, throw some lashes on. And when I come back, we will dive into the new illuminating powder. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back. I went ahead and threw on a pair of lashes, kind of finished up the makeup. Let's move on to the new highlighter that they launched. This is a limited edition and it does come with this Kabuki brush. Typically, they have a brush like this that sits on top of it. Okay. Can you guys see how gorgeous the embossing is? I'm trying to move it away from the, oh, look how gorgeous that is, right? So beautiful. I mean, it's so pretty. I don't even want to touch it. Mm. I love that embossing. So that's the color of it. And it is very soft. I mean, you guys can barely see that, right? I don't think I'm going to use the Kabuki brush. I mean, maybe I could. I guess let's try it when in Rome. So I'm going to grab some right here, pick it up with the brush. I can't tell. Okay, let me let me use a different brush. I just can't tell with that brush. So I'm gonna grab this highlighter brush from Sigma. Okay, now that's a pretty highlighter. I don't know why my camera keeps going so dark. Now that is a pretty highlighter. You can see that it's very, very soft. It's not your traditional highlighter. It's definitely what it says it is. It's an illuminating powder. I feel like this powder is probably best for those who don't really like a traditional highlighter. Those who like something that's a little soft and illuminating, but not a traditional, more of a metallic type of formula. This is really pretty. I do have to admit, this is a pretty highlighter. It's super soft on the skin, and it kind of blends and kind of melts into the skin. It kind of gives a buttery effect. I put so much powder on to try to calm down the shine of my foundation. If you guys knew how much powder I have to try to calm down the shine of the foundation that I'm wearing, holy mosey. Like, I've got so much on. I will say, though, I like these brushes for these type of powders. The reason why they probably couldn't do a brush like this is because this, the embossing comes out, so it comes out from the pan. 
So as you can see, it sticks out farther from the pan. This one is flat, so it's kind of more flush inside here. To protect the embossing of it, um, you, you know, putting this over top, because it has to come out so far, the new one has more of a dome shape than the traditional one. So they had to have room for that embossing to kind of come up from the pan. That's the reason why they probably decided to do a kabuki brush and not the traditional brush. Okay, so this is the final look using the palette and the highlighter. I have a lot to say about both of these products, but before we get into my final thoughts, we're gonna go ahead and jump into the swatches, and I'm gonna swatch this palette next to other palettes that I might find that are similar. As far as just the actual color, I don't know that I'll find a palette that has these peachy shades and stuff, but I'll see what I can find and definitely share with you guys in the swatches. And of course, I'm gonna swatch the highlighter and also compare it to other highlighters so you guys can actually see it and see if it's something that you need in your collection. Then we will get into my final thoughts, so I will see you guys then. Okay, so I do hope that those swatches and comparisons were helpful for you. I do like to do my swatches and comparisons with and without a flash because I feel like you can really see the undertones of shades under a flash. So I hope that that was helpful. Let me go ahead and get into my final thoughts. Let's first talk about the palette. I will be honest with you, I went through so many of my palettes. I was bringing out some of my old palettes, like my old Too Faced palettes from like four or five years ago, trying to find a color story that was similar to this. And I truthfully just did not find it. I really didn't. These shades are quite unique for my collection, let's be clear. But with all of that said, for me on a personal level, this is not my favorite palette. I don't know that this is going to be a palette that I'm going to reach for all that much. Even though I love a peachy eye look and I love peachy tones, this palette is pretty. But there are some things about it that I don't really like. Let me kind of go through the reasons why I don't like it. And then also share who I think this palette would work for. So number one, obviously, these two shades are just too close together to be in one palette for $65. At the end of the day, that is what it is. It's too much money to pay for a palette when two of the shades look too similar, in my opinion. This palette is 65 for 2.8 grams. So you're, you're getting less than three grams worth of product. So you're paying a pretty good penny for these type of quads. I was kind of hoping that there would be like something to this shadow. So if it was gonna have a little bit of a shimmer, I didn't see swatches of it before I bought it. I But you could kind of tell from this image that it had some shimmer, but I wasn't quite sure about this. But these two being matte, like this shade would have been beautiful if it would have had some shimmer to it, some, just something special to it. It would have been a totally different conversation. That's right. my number one biggest complaint. Number two. This palette, you just really have to build to get to pigment. Like, you really got to work for it. There, It's not going to give you a lot of pigment from the gate. Now, if you have, like, fair to light, light, medium skin, I think you'll be fine because 
it has enough pigment for a light complexion, but if you're a light medium, medium tan, you're gonna have to work hard to get this palette to work. Now, if you have a darker complexion, some of these peachy tones will really show up on your complexion. They really, it will really pop. Those of us that are kind of in between the light and the dark, it's a, it's a struggle to get this to work. I mean, I felt like I had to go in each of the shades over and over and over to get that pigment. And I just don't like to work that hard, especially when the palette has less than three grams worth of product. That's kind of frustrating. The third reason why I'm not a super fan of this palette is that this shadow right here is a wah, wah, wah. Now don't get me wrong, this shadow might work for a lot of you. So this is me on a personal level, but this shadow has no, hardly any shimmer and it just doesn't make the eyelid have a pretty shine to it in any way. I feel like they could have added something to it to kind of give it some iridescence it's just a light wash. It's like a lightest wash. And I feel like because this formula is so similar to the Surratt formula, I feel like they missed the opportunity to kind of give that iridescence, to kind of give that sheer, beautiful shine to the eye like you get from the Surratt. And let me, let me show you what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna swatch this shade. I mean, it's just like, what is that? There's hardly anything there. Because this shade at the top doesn't really have much to it, all three of these are kind of all the same color. It's so bizarre to me. I, I, can't, <laughs> I can't understand it. But what I'm talking about is the Surratt palette. So this shade right here, it has that silky texture that these shadows have. And let me show you what I'm talking about. So they could have done something like that where it gives you that beautiful luminosity, but it's not super shimmery or it's not metallic because I understand that these quads fit a particular person. They're created for those that don't like a lot of shimmer and they want something just really soft on the eye, doesn't emphasize wrinkles, not gonna emphasize texture, but but make the eye look, look beautiful. Like I, I understand Chanel's customers. I understand who Chanel creates these quads for, I get it. But I feel like they missed the opportunity because this shadow right here is so beautiful, the way that it blends out. This formula and that kind of iridescence would work for that person that doesn't want shimmer, doesn't want metallic, right? If you're somebody that loves a gorgeous Pat McGrath with all that shimmer and all that chunkiness and that gorgeous shine or a Natasha Denona, this palette is the exact opposite of that. These from Chanel work for that particular person. Some of the people that like these, they're not gonna like the Pat McGrath and Natasha Denona and those really strong pigments. And so there is a market for this, 100% but I feel like they missed the opportunity because the formula is that silky, gorgeous texture. They missed it by not adding something like this. Like if this shade at the bottom right here was something like this, we would be having a different conversation. It, it, we, it just, it could have just brought it together because I can tell you that this shadow, when I apply it on the lid, it's so soft and so pretty but it's not too much. It just gives the lid a little bit of shine. And with this shadow up here, it doesn't hardly give the lid anything. I mean, it really doesn't. Even when I dampened the applicator, and I recommend using the applicator to apply this shadow because it don't got a lot to it. It's such a finely milled glitter that you almost can't see it. It's almost like, what was the point of putting it in there? That's my question. It's like, it doesn't give you enough to make it worth putting it in there in the first place, is my point. Let me just show you what I'm talking about. If I took and put my brush into this shadow right here, okay? I'm just gonna show you what I'm talking about when I put this on the eyelid. When I stick this like right here, it gives such a gorgeous shine to the eyelid, but it's not too much of a shine. You can see that it's not emphasizing texture. You can see that it's not chunky or super shimmery or super foiled or metallic or anything like that. It's a soft shimmer, just so soft and so light. They totally missed it. They could have put something in there that gave this palette something. And this palette doesn't really have anything special about it. I'm looking for at least that one shadow that has something special to it. 
and I'm just not getting it. Like, there's nothing in here that I feel like is worth the $65. And and I say that knowing that I paid $100 for this palette and I would buy it again over and over and over. To me, the Beyond Beige from Surratt, it's worth it every day, all day for me because I love how dependable and how beautiful these shadows are. It has a very unique formula. And so the Chanel also has a unique formula, but it doesn't have anything special about it. I did wanna show you on the back of my hand how light this palette is and how light it swatches. So when I did the swatches, I had to go over it several times just to get the pigment to show up so I could take a picture. I'm gonna come in close. I mean, what is that, right? This palette doesn't have a lot going on. Personally, I don't feel like it's worth $65. At the end of the day, that is my opinion and I personally just can't recommend it. All right, let's talk about the highlighter. Now the highlighter, I quite like. Do I feel like it's worth $80? No, but I feel like this will be a specialty piece. I feel like this will be for that person that just loves makeup and loves something super beautiful and something beautiful to look at. There is absolutely nothing wrong with the formula. The formula is perfect. It blends into the skin. If you're somebody that likes a lighter highlighter where it just it is an illuminating powder. It's not technically a highlighter. This is exactly what it says it is. It is a illuminating powder, meaning that it's a powder but it has a little bit of illumination to it versus a traditional highlighter where it's got a little bit more of a impact to it, right? This is definitely more natural, but so beautiful. Yes, it's $80, so I feel like you're gonna have to really love the embossing on it to kind of justify spending the money, but I will tell you, if you like the embossing and you got the $80 and you wanna buy it, I don't think you'll be disappointed because it's a really, really beautiful highlighter. Those are my overall thoughts, you guys. Sound off down below in the comment section. Let us know how you guys are feeling about the two products that I discussed. Are you guys kind of feeling the same way I am about this palette? Because that is the reason why I posted in my community center. When I posted the link to the quad, I said, wait until you see reviews to, before you buy this because I kind of had a suspicion that it wasn't gonna be that special, but I have been pleasantly surprised a few times when it comes to Chanel, meaning that I've bought something thinking I wasn't gonna like it and then loved it. So I was kind of hoping, but this was, in my opinion, a huge disappointment. Just kind of a full waste, in my opinion. I'd rather save up my money and buy this Beyond Beige. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you. That Beyond Beige palette has my heart and soul. Okay, so that's it for the video. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me in today's video. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day, and I will see you guys all in my next video. Love you. Bye.